afternoon flush tube this is gem stitch here for my february update this is take three because the first take was absolutely fine i don't really edit anyway as you know but i was looking in the wrong direction all the way through the video the second take was going fine and then someone called so that's it all stuff shut off because welcome to my february <laughs> i'd like to say it's just been february it's been january it's been december <laughs> it's been november crazy sauce is what it is so this video is all to do with cross stitch and floss um, um well it's floss tube so it's all to do with cross stitch which is on cross stitch on youtube floss tube Thank you to all my new subscribers um, and thank you to all my long-suffering subscribers. I really appreciate all your encouragement um, and your comments. So what have I been up to? Well, firstly, I'd obviously I'm not making a fashion statement. I'd like to mention the woolly hat and a shout out. A uh, shout out to all the ladies on the MK Stitching Retreat chat. Um, thank you very much for your support this morning. I woke up this morning and it's been snowing, which we knew it was coming. We was warned um, it's been snowing on and off since Monday, but today it's definitely thicker and heavier and it's still going. And my boiler stopped working. Yes, of all the days it decided to do that. It was the day that we had the thickest snow. So I went into meltdown a little bit, um, got dressed, obviously after getting out of bed because it's freezing, got dressed put my dressing gown over the top of my clothes, put a hat on, put my gloves on, put the scarf on, wondering how many other layers I could fit on my body before I couldn't actually move properly. Um, and my husband called and said, and the lady was being really supportive and said, Jem, can you just try this? And I was like, okay. So I braved it in the snow, like the little soldier that I am. And I've managed to fix the boiler. Yes, he may have told me how to do it, but I did it. So therefore, I fixed it. <laughs> um, so I'm so proud of myself, girl power. And all the ladies were really supportive as well. So thank you very much for that. I needed you to cheer me on. Um, so thank you, ladies. So really, I've already said this a few times. So it's remembering what I've actually said. Um... I always try and keep my stitching videos about stitching and a little bit of life update if I feel it's necessary or relevant to explain my lack thereof of stitching. In February, I haven't had much stitching. There's a number of reasons for this, which I will explain here and try to keep it very short. Firstly, the Winter Olympics. I'm not a huge sports fan, but I'm a huge Olympic fan. So whether that be winter or summer, I always make time to watch. So that has massively impacted on me watching my um, floss two videos um, as well as stitching because I actually watch. Um, secondly, it's it's this moving thing. I know I've mentioned it and I know it seems like it's going on forever. Trust me, I know, I feel, I feel it. <laughs> um, the process has been extremely difficult. It's been made very difficult by silly people and um, it's and it's already a difficult process anyway. Um, but literally, I've been trying to hold off these videos because I wanted to make this video more mid-Feb, but I was trying to hold them off so that I have something to say. Um, about what my plans of actions are to do with stitching because this is where it's got to everything's in limbo every thing every choice that we make it's like but we don't know if this is going to happen and we don't know if that's going to happen and it, it's getting to the point we've been like this since November where now it's coming to the crunch time in theory we could I we could hear any minute we could hear this week we could hear next week we've got to the point um, in England and in the UK, although we, there are parts of the UK that do things slightly differently. But generally, as a rule, you um, bid on a property, everyone sort of agrees, but it's not finite. Anything can happen up until point of exchange. Technically, it's not finite after that, but after you've exchanged um, on a property, you're basically making a commitment 
to buy a property and that person and the person buy your property and blah 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 if that chain then fouls um then whoever pulls out is liable to pay costs and they're expensive um so more often than not that doesn't happen once you get to the point of exchange but up until the point of exchange technically anything can happen and so we need to know we're at the point of exchange so we're just, we're again it's always us waiting on other people are just waiting for bums to get in gear and actually do their jobs properly um and be able to keep this moving forward um if the property that we're going that we've bid on and that we've we're going for is a lot of work it's a renovation project which is not really what i wanted um but i'm trying to explain this so that you understand where i'm coming from um it's a renovation project it's not really what i wanted and not only that but the people that was it's not been looked after it's not been cared for and um it has a lot of potential to be lovely um but the people are also dirty as well so there's an awful lot of work that needs to be done to this house in reflection of that the company that are selling this house need it to turn round at a certain mat in a certain amount of time. If the house doesn't, if 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 nothing falls into line in a certain amount of time, then the chain will collapse anyway. So really, we people, the people that are buying our house know this. This is no new news for them. Um, but it's it's like, look, we have till this amount of time. You need to get your little ducks in a row. Um, before this time otherwise it's all over anyway in the high in in not hindsight because it hasn't happened yet the, the the positives that i'm trying to take from it at the moment is that i've only got till the end of next week to either know if it's a yes or it's a no if it's a no then we're coming off the market anyway because we've had enough for a while we've been messed around by so many and i'm being really kind stupid people um and silly people and ridiculous to the point that our estate agents are just shocked and you know you can't account for some people's you know idiocy but yeah so it it's got to the point where we've had enough so this this is either like yes or no um but if it's a yes then at worst we've got 14 days and at best we've got 28 days to pack up our house and move um obviously that impacts my stitching it impacts everything and so therefore it's really difficult to make decisions about me talking about progresses and what my plans are when that could be happening um so i'm going to do a contingency and talk about it like that so hopefully that sort of makes it a bit clearer as to why why i couldn't be a bit I'm not being maybe cheerful self in the last couple of videos and things. It's just been so difficult and so stressful. And um, yeah, it's but it's hopefully going to be over soon. So um, at least we'll know where we stand. Nearly 10 minutes and not even spoken about stitching. I do apologise. Straight on to the stitching now. So what have I actually been up to for the little bit of stitching that I did do in February? Um, well, I always try and do a little ornament a month and complete a little ornament a month. I started them in Stitch Mania last year and um, I was starting to build up a little pile of um, finished projects but not fully finished and I do try to keep on top of my fully finished um, projects. Um, I haven't done my big pieces, so Sweet Christmas and Sleepy Hollow still are not fully finished. Um, but I have managed to get some of my smaller pieces finished, so I'll show those now. So this was a finish that I a stitch that I finished last year called Gall Tidings, and I finished it into a big pillow. So this was in one of the cross stitch, just cross stitch Halloween edition magazines. And any information on any charts that I show in um, that, and that I've stitched, so any alterations to threads and things, I will put in the information box in the information box below. So that was one that I fully finished. 
The next one is The Witches Inn by Cherished Stitches. This was also from um, a Just Cross Stitch Halloween edition. So, and that's actually, you can't really tell, but it's actually on an opalescent fabric. And that's the backing. And I did actually, I think this is some sort of yarn, but I used it like a trim. It reminds me of dreadlocks a little bit. Um, purple ones. But yeah, um, I like it. So that's finished. And then my ornament focus piece for this month was uh, Merry Solstice by The Primitive Hair. I do want to add trim to this and I probably will add trim to the gold hidings as well but I don't have what I want so I'll wait until I find what I want and then uh, and then I'll I'll just I'll just put put it on but they they're ready to go with a snow fabric. So that's uh, Merry Solstice by the Primitive Hair. So my monthly focus piece uh, with the Stitch Mania sows which is um Foodie Fib is a Cricut Collection P's and Q's leaflet number 300 by Vicky Hastings. So, a lovely, pretty pattern. I didn't get as much stitched on it as I would have liked or hoped, but this is where I'm at. So I'm about halfway. As today is the last day of February, I'm obviously not going to get that finished, um, but that's okay, that's fine. Um, I haven't managed to stitch on any of my Wisteria Pixie, but I will explain that now. Wisteria, Wisteria as in the Nor Nora Corbett pixies, like the, similar to the ones there. I always start one of these for the new year, new start. And more often than not, I don't get it finished in one month of January. So what I do is, is uh, I do the Mirabilia and Nora Corbett Mondays, where I'll stitch on it every Monday until it's completed. So I know at worst that I'll get one of these done in a year. Now I haven't managed to stitch any mon on any Mondays in February at all, <clears throat> so I haven't worked on it at all. But as it so happens, because we might be moving and it just seems silly to start a new project, I have got a condi I did have a plan, but it just seems silly to start a new project for March. I may just work on this. It's mythological March and or mythology March, and although I do believe in fairies, um, I may just stitch on this in March if we're moving because it's a work in progress and if I can get it finished, great. And that's just one finished, one less finished. So just as a reminder, I haven't worked on it at all from the last time you saw it, but this is where I'm at. So I haven't got an awful lot left to do. the bottom bit of her dress really but then she has got a lot of beads and as we know beading always takes longer than we think it will so that's where she's at and this is on 32 count Belfast linen um, in the colourway Leo so I may work on her in March if we end up moving if we do not and it all falls through although it may be a week late then my my original plan was to stitch this so it, was, it would have been a new start it would be my first time that I've actually stitched one of these this is an Alessandra Adelaide needlework so an AAN and it's called Aries which is convenient because Aries is for the month of March my husband is an Aries, so it contains DMC, it contains Krennic, uh, beads, but it's in these beautiful gold pigments. And I want to stitch it on a 
Sparkly's fabric as I'm part of the Sparkly's fabric of the month club and I want to stitch it on this fabric which is also called Aries and I just think the gold on this will look fabulous and obviously I'll give it to my husband when it's done because it's his star sign So that was my original plan before things started getting to crunch point and I thought we would we would know more by now and this sort of thing. So that was my original plan. But now, because I'm not 100% sure what's happening, it just seems silly to potentially... I've got to pack up a whole house and it just seems silly to start a new project and maybe only get 10 stitches in it. And... I don't really want to do that to be honest so I'd rather work on a work in progress and only get 10 stitches in um, and maybe start this later on um, in the year if I get the opportunity after painting for how many hours but yeah so um, that's my contingency if I don't move if we do move then I'm just going to stitch on the wisteria um, and hopefully get that done so that's my plan of action for my monthly focus piece for March mythology for my little ornament because last year in for stitch mania in May I did 12 new starts of little ornaments so that I could start to build up my little small ornament collection and so I did one day working on this last year it's the petite Halloween sampler by Nikki's creations and it was in Halloween, just cross-stitch 2014. And this is where I got, after one day of stitching, that's the back. How about you see the front? Um, after one day of stitching. So hopefully I can get this finished. If I can't get it finished in the month of March, because obviously now you can understand why I think I might be being optimistic <laughs> with everything else going on. Um, if I can't get it finished, it's not the end of the world because it will roll over into the Stitch Mania. 12 starts of Stitch Mania. I just won't have 12 because this would be um, rolled over and inserted in their place. So. That's. Nikki's Creations Petite Halloween Sampler so that will be my small ornament focus piece for March um, what else ah. Sampler Sundays um, I'm working on the Susanna Hardiman 1847 from the Sampler and Antique Needlework Volume 7 it should look like this I'm not actually doing the border I discussed it in a couple of videos and I stitched this in um, a Q-snap uh, downstairs and not on a frame <coughs> excuse me and not on a frame because of um, it's a Sunday and probably I, I should spend time with my husband <laughs> probably <laughs> but yeah so this is where I am I have stitched on it I think about two Sundays so this isn't two Sundays worth of work there's been other work on it but in February I've stitched two Sundays so that's where I'm up to so the, it's it's laid out <clears throat> excuse me it's laid out over four sort of A4 pages and this is the top two is done so there's only two at the bottom so I've changed out a lot of the colours in this um, but I will leave that information in the information box below <clears throat> if you are interested in using this colourway just as a heads up it's absolutely not a problem but I think I am running out of some of the colours of some of the special threads so um, just bear with me um, because as I use them I'll always say uh, rather than one skein of I'll put times two of this particular thread or whatever so that you're very clear on, on
on how much you would need when you're ordering, especially with um, hand dyed because threads because of dye lot issues and things. So I try and make it as clear as I can, but you never really know until you've actually finished the piece exactly how much you need. So I'll let you know as I go along. If I go into a second thread. So that's my Susanna Hardiman. Obviously she'll that she'll be my sampler Sundays till she's finished. Um we'll probably work on the wisteria as of tomorrow. Today's the end of Feb, so as of today tomorrow, first of March, I will work on the wisteria. Um and then may pick up the AAN if things uh, don't turn out the way we expected. Um if not, then if if it's all systems go, then I've not started anything new and, you know, so. Thank you guys for all your support. Sorry, I'm a bit all over the place. It's just where I am at at the moment. Um, thank you for all your support. Oh, I would also like to um, shout out the silent stitcher. She made a comment in my last um, video, my shabby chic video, um, about uh, a lot of my continental patterns. And she asked that um, I use, if I could actually put in my own subtitles. And absolutely, um, I'll be honest, I'm a technophobe and it is something that I'll definitely consider and it was something that I'll definitely, definitely look into. Um, and it's a very, very valid point. It does take me a little bit longer, probably than normal people, to figure out how things work, but that won't stop me from doing it. I will get there in the end. Um, I also probably sent Google or whatever translation they use on a on a rampage because of my terrible Italian and my terrible French. Um, so them trying to fit in words and it is probably why it went all a little bit awry. Um, but I will definitely, definitely try. Just to let you know, if I talk about any patterns in my videos, I always put the information in the information box below. Um, so if you can't find it there and if you've got any questions, then by all means, please ask. Um, but that should help. And I know with the Shabby Chic video, I, I tried to put them in order. Um, in the order that I showed them should be the order they're actually in um, on the list. So if that if that helps at all. Um, but thank you very much for all your support, all your comments. Thank you to all my new subscribers. Um, I'm not normally so wired, but um, yeah. And uh, thank you to all my long suffering um, subscribers. I really, really do appreciate um, all the support and encouragement you give me. So, thank you very much, guys. Happy stitching, and I will keep you updated. Bye bye.